Out here on the bald-headed Saskatchewan prairie, we have no maple leaf. We have uh, crocuses, tiger lilies, pigweed, sow thistle, Russian thistle, Canadian thistle. In a way, the maple leaf isn't for us. We have quite a mixture of people, too. Uh, Polish, German, Galician, Ukrainian, Dukabor, Bohemian. We have Mennonites and Hutterites, Czechoslovak, Hungarian. We have them all. But in my newspaper, these are the people who get into the society notes. I write up their tea parties and bridge parties and meetings of the Louis Riel chapter of the IODE. Mrs. Lucy Tregillis can trace her family clear back to the Fenian raids in Huron County. Aunt Lil's from England, where she was born. Pure English, right down from William the Conqueror. Sadie Twells claims she's more Canadian than Violet Chivers. Chivers are UE loyalists, and the Twells claim the UE loyalists came to this country after the Twells. Steve Kaziwi doesn't live in town. He had no grandfather defending the Maple Leaf uh, from the Fenian raids. He didn't come over from merry old England. His folks didn't take up any homestead with the UE loyalists. Steve is uh, Central European. So is his wife. So is young Steve, who attends Rabbit High School, five miles south of town. Now, it would be nice if I could say in every issue of my weekly newspaper that uh, everything is sweetness and light around our district. I could, but it would be a little one side of the truth. Take all them vegetables, and them clear out the correction line. Turnips, parsnips, acres of them. In town, peddling them to folks. Royal Cafe. Oh, there ought to be a law. What does the CCF ever do for me anyway? Well, where did he get all the cash in the first place? Saving it, living like a pig. Sticking their nickels in a sock, waiting till they get a flour sack full so they can go and buy out all them fellas that didn't even have hired help during the war because their sons was overseas. Well, this is happening all over the country. There ought to be a law. Northern liberals, northern conservatives. Take my boy. He ain't got that kind of cash. Him and his wife ain't got that kind of money. And they could use that hopper place. Well, sure they you could. You see my wife's yeah. lately? My boy fighting overseas while well, see we make hay right here. She thinks she's punishing. Well, there ought to be a law I to protect our own law. kind. Sure there ought to. Right kind of government put in a law. Keep them from buying more land until they get assimilated. <laughs> they got to be part of the community. Speak English all the time. They don't let them Hooterites in Alberta swarm any time they feel like it. <laughs> I'll say they don't. What are you fellows do, you Indians? Plot against the whites? <laughs> hey, Taffy, Taffy, I'm buying it for this fellow. Uh, not, not for me, all right? Not for me, Steve. All right, all right, over at that table then. Funny thing happened to me last week. Oh, Taffy, Taffy! Over at this table, too. No, eh? no, not for me. Leave me out, no. Leave me out. All right, all right. Bill, how about you? You want to have uh, a rest? still got a couple. Uh, no, no. All right, maybe next time, eh? Hey, nobody use this chair, eh? No. A funny thing happened to me last week. Stevie and me was coming in town, driving in fast. Dad, Stevie says to me, what's your hurry? No hurry, I say, Stevie, no hurry. You going to a fire, Stevie says? No fire, I say, no fire, Stevie. I got a push Wait a minute. Then we smell something burning. Was burning something. Cigarette ash dropped down. Car seat on fire. Was burning. Was at fire not going to fire? At fire already. And Stevie asking what's hurry. <laughs> well, I gotta push off. You come, Bill? Yeah. Running a weekly newspaper, I come across that sort of thing a little more often than most. First I heard of anything was in uh, Harvey Hoschel's barber shop.
I don't like it. Some folks say I do, but I don't. Nobody hates to charge a dollar for a haircut more than I do, Chet. It's a terrible price. Terrible price. Yeah. <clears throat> Diminishing returns. Does it? Reaches a point. Folks think twice about getting a haircut. Don't step into that chair but want to see it on their face. Why? Realization. Oh. Bright on their face. This here haircut's going to cost me a whole dollar. Hair gets longer. Longer time between haircuts. First thing to go is kids' haircuts. Mother goes out and buys herself a pair of clippers. There's tufts of hair all over the kitchen floor, all over the West these days. Is there? Then there's those that never did come to me for their haircuts. Furriners. Always had their women do it for them. Like uh, Steve Kaziwi. Must be pretty tough on the barber over there. Ukraine, Poland, Hungary. Yeah, I guess they are. Country of. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Mind you, wouldn't make a particle of difference to me. Steve Kaziwi came in here every day for a shave. Wouldn't make a bit of difference. But there's other things. Oh, what other things? Simulation. Oh, I see. Take his language. Well, Steve does all right. He says anything he wants you to understand. Been in this country 15, 20 years. Well, he gets it across all right. Of course, sometimes it comes out a little twisted, kind of like a horse coming out of a stable backwards. Mrs. Kaziwi, wife, not a word. Oh? Just her native tongue. Not a word in English simulation. Oh, Harvey, it's harder for the women. The men get around a bit, and the English rubs off on them. They pick it up when they go into the store or take some grain into the elevator. They can't help picking up a little bit. It's different for the woman. She's at home. It's harder for her. That woman will go to a grave speaking her native tongue. Well, Harvey, maybe they like to relax when they get home around the fire. It's hard, you know, speaking a language that you're not used to. They get home, it's just themselves. They want to loosen up a bit, relax. Kind of like taking off your shoes, Harv. One of the prices you got to pay, Chet. Huh? Precious thing. Comes high, precious thing. What is? Good citizenship. Canadian citizenship. Comes high. Price tag on it. Let me hit now, just tilt her forward there. Look, Harv, Steve Kaziwi and his wife and son aren't the kind I got of nothing against Steve Kaziwi. You just don't like him cutting his own hair. Make a particle. Hey, uh, Harv, just uh, watch those two moles at the back of my neck. I just Would like you, to uh, see folks, all kinds of folks, take a healthy interest in their community. You're just above the collar line. There's one on either side. And this razor slides over your neck. It well, won't matter. Well, gets sensitive about Well, that moles. leather's covering them up. Well, they bleed, you know. They those bleed. two moles are standing out like a couple of elevators. Take the lather off first. First thing good barber always does. Gets to know his clients, you know. I could name you every mole in this community. They don't come and go, you know. Look, Harvey, now, if you just will you the... sit still and relax? I can't shave a moving object. Go out of their way to take an interest. Well, Steve Kaziwi does all right. Nothing wrong with his citizenship, is there? Well, um. Uh... Pays his taxes regular, don't he? A lot more to it than that, Chet. A hard worker, clean farmer, honest? A lot more. Well, look, you, what every single person does affects this country. Huh? Yeah, you take all them foreign groups of people carrying on, speaking their own language. Why, down in Quebec, they got whole communities where not a word, not a single word English is spoke. Morning till night, daybreak to dark. French. Well, maybe most of the people down there are French. They aren't the only ones. All over this dominion, ours. Repeats herself. Repeats herself. Yes, Harvey. You take this Kaziwi affair. 
He can't blame it on everybody else. Look, Harvey, what what are you trying to do? There's Th feeling. There's feeling in the district, Chet. What? Ricky was in here two hours ago, sitting right there. Land hog. You're damn right he is. I don't usually see eye to eye with Albert Ricky, but he was sitting there muttering, land greedy, kaziwi, buying the hopper half section. Oh, Ricky? Kaziwi. Oh. Rumor has it he's buying the hopper place. Ricky ain't got no more money to buy land. Well, he's got enough for five farms already. It's like all the others. They old last fall. Got his crop under all those snow. Mm, won't get it out till spring if he does then. Shortage of cash in the district, Chet. Credit situation's pretty bad. So that's why... Kind of a fluke. Kiziwi's got his crop all irony. Huh? Cutting his crop old-fashioned with a binder. Got her into the stocks. Only fella got his crop off last fall. Got the cash. Folks feel he's taking advantage of his luck. Well, it wasn't but luck that he say it. I say that's what folks are saying. Wet or dry? Hmm? I say wet. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> folks feel because he was getting too big for his overalls. There's feeling a uh, dollar check. Uh -huh. There's feeling. Two ball of the four in the corner. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, knock it off. Uh-oh. There you go again. There go. All right, dirty Bill. Shoot up. Anybody use this table? No. Who shot? Come on, Eric. It's my shot. Yeah. I think I'll try the 11 in the side pocket. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> 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 hey, 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 girl. Like to play a little game? A little game of fluke? No time. Got to get back to the shop. Oh, come on, Colonel. Shoot a little game. Both feet on the floor. All right. I spot you. I spot you 20 points. No. Good shot. Oh, kids. You play the little game, eh? Come on. Play a little game of fluke, huh? No, no, no. got the coal oil on your fire. Oh, did she? That's my point. Nobody's been doing so good with it, except Stevie Kazibu. Got everyone right up on the board yesterday. Well, that's nice. Well, he works for it. Well, doesn't everybody work for everything? Not like Stevie. Goes out her like he was stuck in a field. You don't quit till he's got her. He's got to work for everything. Say, uh, how's he doing at school? You see? Yeah. Well, it's not first. He's in the first three in grade. No, no, no. I didn't mean that way. I meant, uh, how's he getting along with the uh, other boys uh, these days? Oh, well, last... Uh, not too good. Oh? Like last week. Fight. Yeah? I wasn't in it. Stevie, Joe, Archie, and Alec. Bunch of them. What, all on Stevie? Yep, five of them. Stevie get hurt? Oh, Stevie, he didn't get hurt much. He's tough. Joe Sparrow and Archie Winter quit right away with the nosebleed. And Alex Norton got the wind knocked out of him. Hmm. And Joe, he called Stevie a damn hunky. And Archie said they didn't even have the citizenship. They weren't even Canadians. And Pete called Stevie a dirty foreign cat licker. 
Well, Mr. Cardwell, she come out near the end and they quit. They all got to stay in for a week after four and help Mr. Bolington clean up. Hmm. Stevie, too? Oh, no. The kids say their folks are real hot about it. Her keeping them in for fighting and not keeping Stevie in. Archie says his dad says because he was getting too big for the overhauls. Getting all that land and building that big barn. Hey, I don't get it. Uh, don't get what, Gordy? Well, people don't seem so fussy about Kazeevis anymore. Well, maybe it's because they're doing so well. Huh? Well, you know, getting that Hooper place and building that barn. Jealous? Yeah, maybe kind of jealous, Gordy. You know, Steve's got the place looking pretty nice now. Paint the house white and the roof blue. Well, I don't see what that should make folks mad. Well, you know, a lot of people around here, Gordy, haven't had it so good the last couple of years. You see, uh, people don't take to prosperity, at least not when it's a neighbor's prosperity and when it's someone who's you know, made a little different from the rest of us. What do you mean, the way he talks and him being, well, like a foreigner? Yeah, yeah, that's right, Gordy. Well, now, listen, we'll uh, talk about this some other time. These newspapers won't deliver themselves, so here you are. And say, uh, listen, uh, in the meantime, if you uh, hear anyone calling Steve a hunky, I guess you know what... Sure. Uh, Stevie's still my friend. a boy. Okay, we'll see you later. Okay, see ya. Got a match, sir? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that way you can always tell. Buy his water? Buy a pop station's water? Did you just buy water? Yep. You watch next time. Next election. They get a cabinet minister up there on that platform, and they'll bring him his water in a sterling silver pitcher. All shined up by the Liberal Ladies Club. <laughs> Excuse me, Herb. Yeah, sure. Then you take the fellow that's the member of Parliament. How does he get his water? Cut glass pitcher. Real fancy glass. <laughs> yeah. But you take the candidate that ain't the member, he's uh, trying to upset the member this time. He don't get sterling silver. He don't get cut glass. He gets a china pitcher, maybe. Out of one of them hotel rooms. <laughs> <laughs> and the independent candidate, that's plain dirt candidate, just a white cup. <laughs> Cracked! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <that's a little laughs> yeah. When he's drunk that, he better wrestle his own or quit talking. <laughs> so that's the way you turn your politicians apart, it's by their water. And that's the way you get their chances in the next election. Yeah, How well. they get their water to them on the platform. However he gets the water on the platform, Doc's getting my vote next time. Doc knows what he's doing. A few more of him's what they need up there. You take these Luterites. Fellow like Doc, they wouldn't be swarming every time they felt like it. Yeah. How the age do they expect a fellow to scratch up the kind of money they got? Whole damn colony sticking together, raising the price. That's how they get a hold of all the good land. Never buy anything. No good to anybody. The way I see it, the Hoodrites ain't the only ones. Ought to do something about all the rest of the foreigners getting all the good land. You take Steve Kaziwe. Hello. Right. Hello, Duchamp. Everybody, hello. Herb. Pete. How's your sore Romero, Pete? I Herb, get... what in the fence? Shot her. Oh, I'm sorry, Pete. It's too bad, I'm sorry. Never mind, don't let it bust your heart. It's only a horse. <laughs> Joe, I hear you got your limit. Geese. Ah, oh, that's nice, Joe. Limit honkers. Those not honkers. Just wavies. Ah, oh, geese all geese, Joe. Me, never I shoot at goose. At the goose, even. Never I had chance to miss at the goose. Well, there's some that's too tight and mean to spend the money for shells. Can't shoot a goose without you buy shells. Can you? 
All right, Joe. You are right. All right, you other fellows, too. Bill. Bill, I was wondering... Sorry, you... Steve. I got a lot of work to do. Not waste your valuable time, Bill. Not sorry, your horse. Not happy, your goose shoot. Bisk. Sharp and bisk I got outside. Oh, why, sure, Steve. Like always, eh, Bill? Cash. Nothing wrong, my cash. Nothing wrong, Kiziwi dollar. Huh? No time, Kiziwi. Lots time, Kiziwi money. Sure. That's nice. That's nice, I suppose. Thank you. Mr. Lambert, there's something I... It's about the Kaziwis. Yes, Miss Johnson? Well, I, I was coming in tonight anyway for my subscription, but there's something else. I don't like what's happening in our town with the Kaziwis. I hadn't realized it had gone so far. Yeah, it's, uh, it's rolling right along. It's not like they aren't... They don't talk like the women I know. Well, they're the women you know, all right. Sometimes men. I think men have the real intolerance. Well, I don't think you women have got anything to go around patting yourselves on the back about. Is she a member of your WA? Mrs. Kazibi? She was asked. Did she ever attend a meeting? Well, no. Well, you women were the ones who had the chance to do some real good in the first place. The men, the fellas like uh, Steve Kaziwi, they can get around. They don't need a helping hand so much. But uh, a woman, mother, stuck in the home... She has to say about the kids, the next generation. Well, I'm not saying she hasn't. I thought perhaps if you do an editorial. No, I'm afraid it's too late for that kind of thing. You women had the chance. If you'd have got at the mother and threw her to the children, it would have the whole family would... Excuse me. Yeah, Lambert here. What? When did it... How long's it been... Yeah, okay. Uh, right over, right over. What is it, Mr. Lambert? Anything serious? It's a kazooie. Fire. Oh, no. Their bar? Their house. Oh. Their house. <laughs> Sorry, all good fellows now, yeah. You helped. 
when my house going up. Then you help put it any good for help person there. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm grateful. Thank you very much. Stevie, Stevie, go and help your mother. Go on. You ain't going to help before with kind words. You're not going to help now. Oh, sir, you're not sorry, my wife, me, my kid. You're sorry, my house. When you're ready, be sorry, my wife, me, my kid. Come back, all right, come back again. Not before. It's not going to be like before no more. No, sir. You take my business. Elevator, take my grain. You take honky vegetables. You take honey grain. And you take dirty foreigner money, too. But we ain't like you. He's we, his wife, his kid. Not British. Who the hell British? Who they, by God? British people savage when my people culture. Anglo-Saxon. Just human being? Me too. I got muscle, I got human muscle. I got human heart too. Same British. How you like to be alone sometime? Only one different in the whole place. I tell you, terrible. So terrible, I don't even wish to happen to you. Not even you. a bucket. Not a bucket. That was the end of it. I guess Steve Kazee made his point that night, standing there in front of his burning house. A little late for most of us in this district, but he made it. <laughs>